In this video, we'll be looking at how to solve proportions. A proportion is a ratio between two quantities. For example, A over B could be compared to C over D. And a common method to solving a proportion is to use something called cross multiplication. So this fractional relationship is equivalent to the product of A times D and B times C, those being equal. But before we use cross multiplication, I think it's important to understand why this process works. Some people call it um, the butterfly method, which um, is sort of a, a cheap trick that doesn't really reveal the, uh, the quality mathematics behind this method. So uh, let's first make sure we understand <clears throat> why uh, AD equals BC is equivalent to the fraction. So let's, let's start with AD equaling BC. <clears throat> Can we then turn that into the ratios? Well, we can divide both sides of this equation because it is an equation, so we can do whatever we want uh, as long as we do to both sides. And let's divide both sides by BD. So if we do that, then on the left-hand side, the D terms will cancel uh, by design. And on the right-hand side, the B terms will cancel, leaving us with precisely the original ratio we started with, A over B equals C over D, which means that this cross multiplication idea does work. Uh, it works in both directions. So let's look at a couple of quick uh, examples here. Let's start with a simple, uh, very simple proportion you may have studied in earlier math class, perhaps around seventh grade. Four over nine equals 10 over X. So let's use this cross product uh, idea and get four X equals nine times 10 or 90. And then divide and you very quickly find the number that completes the ratio and that would be 22 and a half. So 4 is to 9 as 10 is to 22 and a half. Now a slightly more mature uh, example. Let's say we have some unknown quantities within our proportion. So x plus 5 is to 4 as x minus 3 is to 5. So how do we solve this proportion? Well, same deal. Look at the cross products. Keeping in mind that it means 5 times the quantity x plus 5 and 4 times the quantity x minus 3. So we need to use the, distribu uh, the distributive property here in order to properly simplify. So that'll give us uh, what you can see here, 5x plus 25 equals 4x minus 12. Some simple algebra in terms of gathering terms. This will give us 1x plus 25 equals negative 12. And simply remove 25 from both sides, and you get x equals the result, which is negative 37. Now, does it get more complicated? Well, it can, especially when our ratios deal with more complicated items. Uh, the following problem will look very much like the previous one uh, at first glance, but you'll notice a subtlety, which reveals itself in just a moment. Uh, x plus 3 is to 2, as 9 is to x minus 4. So you proceed as, as usual with a little cross product here, and let's see, we'll get um, hmm, x plus 3 times x minus 4, and that's going to equal 2 times 9, 18. So on the left-hand side, we have two what are called binomials being multiplied by each other, and a common approach to this is to double distribute. So this is the idea of the distributive property, but sort of applied with some unknown terms. Some of you may know this as the FOIL method, first, outer, inner, last. Others of you may have learned a box method. Uh, there's other terms for this as well, but um, uh, whatever way you prefer, we have to approach this product a little more carefully than just uh, you know, x squared minus 12, because there's some other terms involved as well. So uh, I personally like to use the distributive property here. So x times x, that first set gives us x squared, and then distributing the x to the negative 4, will give us negative 4x. Uh, 3 times x is 3x. And finally, 3 distributed to the negative 4 will give us negative 12. And that, of course, equals 18 in this problem. So we have a quadratic term. The x squared is a square term. So to solve this thing, we need to set the entire equation equal to 0. Equaling 18 is, is a result of this problem, but if we set it equal to 0, we can solve um, using some algebraic techniques. So remove 18 from both sides. Combine your like terms here. Negative 4x plus 3x makes negative 1x. And then the constants, negative 12, negative 18, combine to make negative 30. Now, this is what's called a trinomial. 
And to solve this trinomial set equal to zero, we need to use something called a factoring process. So there's a couple ways to approach factoring. Um, it's never really the easiest thing. It, it involves a little bit of guess and check and some trial and error. But this uh, trinomial can be thought of as the result of two binomials being multiplied. So basically working backwards from earlier, where we went from red to green, uh, x times x must be x squared, as you can see there. Now we need to decompose the negative 30, the constant term. We need to consider carefully the factors of this number. What are two numbers that multiply to give negative 30? Well, you got 1 and 30, uh, you got 2 and 15, uh, you got 3 and 10, and finally you have 5 and 6. So some combination of these, if this is factorable, will produce uh, the appropriate binomials. So let's try uh, 15 and 2. That makes 30. Uh, but, and of course I can make a negative 30 with some signs. But if I think about the, the process here, I'm going to get 15x on the outside and 2x on the inside. And there's no way I can make 15x and 2x become the middle term negative x, which is what I would want. So this is not going to work, this particular combination of 15 and 2. Because 15 and 2 do give 30, but they don't add or subtract to give negative x in the middle term. So let's try uh, 5 and 6. That also gives us 30. But hey, if I approach this a little more carefully, I can get, let's see, uh, negative 6x on the outside and 5x on the inside. So I'm going to check my work here because, again, factoring is uh, not the easiest thing in the world. So x times x is x squared. And then distributing again, negative 6x and then positive 5x and negative 30 for the other distribution. And hey, if I look carefully, that is exactly what I had in the previous black step, x squared minus x, when you combine terms, minus 30. So the blue and green terms there are the proper factorization of the x squared minus x minus 30 trinomial. So we're, uh, we've just factored, and now we need to use something called the zero product property. The zero product property states that if two things are multiplied, or actually multiple things are multiplied to create zero, then one of those things must be zero. So in one universe, x plus 5 could be the zero term, and in another universe, x minus 6 could instead be the zero term. So in short, set each binomial equal to zero, and then solve. So our two solutions are x minus 5 or x equals 6. So a simple proportion ended up being a more complicated algebraic problem. We'll look at one final example, similar to the last one with a small subtlety. So 1 over x plus 4, that proportion compared to 2x minus 3 over 13. Okay, well, cross products as we've been starting with gives us x plus 4 and 2x minus 3 being multiplied on one side and on the other, of course, just 13 times 1. So some double distribution here. We get 2x squared plus 8x and then negative 3x and negative 12. So bringing our uh, 13 over so we can create a set equal to 0 as well as combining like terms. So that's positive 5x. And then, as mentioned, bring the 13 over. That'll give us negative, let's see, 25, I believe. OK, now comes the factoring. Now, notice that the leading coefficient here is 2. It's 2x squared, not just x squared. So we need to start with decomposing that term. The only way to get 2x squared is to multiply 2x times x. So that's going to be our first pair of terms within each binomial. Uh, so that's going to complicate things a bit, as, as we're about to see. So 2x and x. And then we look at the factors of our constant term, which, are, uh, which is 25. So factors of 25, let's see. I got 1 and 25, and you got 5 and 5. That's it. OK, a fairly short list. Um, but at first blush, neither of these are going to give us the middle term of 5. 5x is what we want. So I'll, I'll try 5 and 5 here, and I get 10x um, with this combination. And 5x with this combination. So 5 and 5 don't give 5 by adding or subtracting, but again, this outer product gives us 10x. This inner product gives us 5x. And hey, if I want 
positive 5x as my result for our middle term, then I would need 10 take away 5. So positive 10x minus 5x. And you can check with that using the um, distributive property again to make sure that it equals the previous step, and you'll find that indeed it does. But just using the zero product property, setting each binomial equal to zero now that we have factored, gives us our solution. So 2x equals 5, which means x equals 5 over 2. And finally, solving the other guy, we get x equals negative 5. So here are our two solutions from our proportion.